Hello friends and welcome back to another dev vlog. I'm Logic Projects and this is my last dev vlog for March. I spent the last two weeks in March working on cloning a board game that me and my family like to play. This is kind of a personal project and I'll never be able to publish it, but this is a game that me and my family used to love to play before the pandemic split us apart and now with me moved across country, there's not much chance we'll ever get to play it again. It's called Alhambra, and the rough idea is that you spend money to buy tiles and you build up a giant tile-based city, and then at the end of every scoring round you get points based on who has the most of each of the different color tiles. What makes this game interesting to me is that we own 20 expansions for the game, and we can play any combination of these. This makes it very accessible because the base game, while not very much fun, is very simple to learn how to play, and then we can add any combination of expansions to make any game experience we want. It can be as complex or as simple as we need to fit whoever's playing at the time. In the past two weeks I got all the rules implemented and I think the game works perfectly fine for local multiplayer. My next goal was to add in Mirror to get online networking. I've started trying to learn Mirror and it's a little bit overwhelming to start out networking but I think I'm getting my head around it. Unity also released their own multiplayer solution this week, and I've debated going to join Unity's in-house multiplayer solution, but it's kind of intimidating because it is brand new, and I'm already using a lot of other preview packages, and there's not a lot of tutorials or good documentation on the new system yet. The heart of the game focuses around your turn. A single turn of the game focuses around you taking an action. There are four money cards you can choose from, and four tiles you can choose to buy. Each of the tiles is in a slot associated with one of the four colors of money. If you pay exact change for a tile, you get a second turn. If you pay too much for a tile, it ends your turn and you have to place all the tiles you bought. If you decide to take money, you can take one money card greater than five, or multiple money cards if they add up to five. Once your turn's over, it's time to place the tiles you bought during your turn. Tiles have black lines indicating walls. You must always be able to walk from any tile back to the starting point. Also, if you want to have walls internal to your city, both tiles have to match up, so a south wall has to line up with a north wall, and an east with a west. If there's nowhere to place a tile, or you don't like your options, you can put it on your reserve board. The reserve board is just a place for you to store tiles you can't place yet, and it doesn't count for scoring rounds. You also have the option during your turn to swap a tile out with any tile on the reserve board, assuming it still meets the wall's rules and you can take a tile off your reserve board and place it on your Alhambra, but this uses your action for the turn. After enough cards have been drawn from the money deck, eventually you'll hit two scoring rounds. The first scoring round is very low stakes, and you can get up to six points for having the most of purple, or down to one point for having the most of blue. You get points for having the most of a color, and if multiple people have the same number of a color, you tie. And you split the points by dividing it by the number of people tied and rounding down. You also get points for the longest stretch of exterior wall. The game ends when there's not enough tiles to restock the market. There are 48 tiles in the default bag, so the game goes on for quite a while. When there's not enough tiles to restock the market, the market is auctioned off and whoever has the most of each color money gets that corresponding tile and gets a chance to place them. The final scoring round happens as a combination of the previous two. So, if you have the most of a tile, you get points, if you have the second most, you get the points from the second round, and if you have the least number of a tile, you get the points from the first round. The person who has the most points wins the game. As I was implementing this, I discovered it's a shockingly complex system of rules. If you pay with exact change, your turn's not over. If you take one money card, you can then take another money card if it adds up to five, but you can't take a tile at that point. If you go down and start redesigning your Alhambra, it can use up your action. So actually, your individual turn is a very complex state machine that has to manage if you've already taken money, if you've already bought a tile, what tile you're currently trying to buy, if you can afford the tile. There's a lot of different factors that go into deciding a single turn. I also tried out a more complex software architecture where I would define all of the game rules and business logic and just pure C-sharp classes, and then try to limit what files have Unity-specific tie-ins. So I'd have the mono behavior for the player have both an Alhambra and hand, but the Alhambra and hand are pure C-sharp classes that handle their own logic and validation. I also had a very difficult time figuring out how to score external walls. I learned how to load in tiles from a JSON file, so I was able to set up all the tiles that are in the actual board game with their specific walls. But being able to follow stretches of walls was a very difficult problem, and I actually made a PowerPoint and showed it to my girlfriend when I came up with a solution. 
In short, the solution is I take the tiles and turn them into a different data structure that's more representative of the walls. And at this stage, I can remove all internal walls. And on the new data structure, it's easy to detect if something's a horizontal or vertical wall. Then I'm left with 12 cases, six for vertical and six for horizontal, because they can go in a straight line or branch off in either of the two directions on both sides of the wall. Then I can recursively walk through this new data structure, checking if there's any walls that it's possibly connected to, and adding them to a list of already visited walls. When there's no more walls to visit, I can just return the size of the visited list. I think this is a pretty solid algorithm. I'm sure there's a better approach, but I really racked my brain trying to come up with a way to follow this external wall. And I'm just, I think the problem is I don't have a very good data structure for the problem. Other than that, it's very interesting to try to do this project because I had an official design doc that I had to meet. I couldn't cheat or change the rules to make them easier to program. If the instruction book says that a nuance has worked out a certain way, I had to actually implement it in that exact way. I think for the next week I'm going to work on getting multiplayer added and then try to add in some like visual flair of particles or a screen shake or notifications in the UI just to make the game a little more enjoyable for people to play. And then I'm going to try to get some people to play online with me. Working out how to do the multiplayer is very intimidating, but I found a lot of good resources and some of them have only been posted in the past few weeks. So I'm really grateful that there's such a good community around Unity and around using Mirror for multiplayer. Going forward, I think it's time for me to start a really long-term project. So I think after the end of March and after I've cleaned up with this project, I'm going to move into doing a three month long project. And I have a couple of good ideas that I'm going to prototype out and maybe I'll try to present them here on this channel before I commit to one for the full three months. In this project, I learned a lot about software architecture and it really got me thinking about keeping my code clean. This was a very sophisticated project and I think I managed a lot of the complexities pretty well. But now that I'm trying to add multiplayer into it, I'm starting to see how weak some of my architecture is. I can definitely see how much I've grown since my very first project, and I feel like I'm getting a lot better as a programmer and also as a game designer. My goal going forward is I need to add a lot more juice and game feel to my games. I'm going to try to follow a lot of tutorials to learn about how to make just a game feel good to play. I think I've got like the core interesting mechanics of the games down, but it's time for me to make it just get that little bit of polish that makes a great game different than a good game. As always, thanks for watching, and I hope you continue following me on my journey of my first year of game development.